Hello, my miraculous friend, and welcome to another episode of the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. This is Reverend Francis Faden, and I'm so grateful that we get to spend this time together helping you to magnify your miracles. But before we get into today's episode, let's take a few deep breaths together just to get ourselves grounded and centered. Breathing in the energy of expansion, breathing out anything that you no longer need. And as we are focusing on our breathing, allowing ourselves to become receptive to whatever it is that might be most helpful. And knowing that whatever we hear, it's going to be exactly what we need to hear to help us to magnify our miracles. Let's take one more deep breath together in gratitude. And we can begin. All right, my friend, well, welcome back to the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. I'm so just really looking forward to this topic because this is something that I've struggled with. And last week we were talking about how Aretha Franklin taught me a really important lesson about success. And if you didn't get a chance to listen to last week's episode, I highly recommend that you check it out. But one of the key things that I said that I learned was this moment of decision where she made a decision and that changed the course of her life. She went from being a, a gifted but struggling jazz singer to becoming the queen of soul and that power of decision. So today I wanna to talk about what if you have difficulty making decisions? What if you struggle with being indecisive? Maybe you make decisions and then you change your mind, which is what I tend to do, um, or you have trouble even making the decision at all. And there's something very specific that I teach my clients to do and that I practice myself. And I'm going to teach that to you today. I'm going to put my coach's hat on and teach that to you today. And let me tell you a little bit why it's so important to be able to make decisions. You know, a lot of the self-help books and the success books like Napoleon Hill and all that, they talk about the importance of making decisions quickly and then sticking to those decisions. <clears throat> And what I can tell you is whether you make them quickly or not, the sticking to them really is the important thing because the universe is always listening to you. And so it, you know, I've struggled with this myself. I'll make a decision. And then, you know, a couple hours later, I'm like, well, maybe, maybe I'll do this or maybe I'll do that. And what happens is when we decide there's a mechanism in the universe, that's like, boom, it starts kicking into place and starts bringing us whatever we might need to help us with that decision. But then when we change our mind, it's like, it puts the brakes on and it gets really confused. And so the universe is always mirroring to us and is always working in harmony with our energy. So if we go, well, first it's this, but then it's this, but maybe it's this and then it's this. There's, this, there's a ping pong energy. And what happens, and this breaks my heart, is that people will make a decision and on the inside, they're like, well, I'm not so sure. And they're kind of debating in their mind. And then the universe is waiting for them to get clear and then no results show up and then they get discouraged. Has that ever happened to you? It's happened to me. Like you're thinking about it, you think you've decided, but you're really kind of on the fence about it. And the universe is waiting for you to be all in. I have seen this happen in my life over and over again with myself, with my clients, with my friends and family, that a real decision, a committed decision brings miracles. It's one of the way to magnify your miracles is you make decisions that are true for you and then you put your energy and your focus on that and then boom, things start moving for you. So what do you do if that's hard for you? What do you do if you struggle with that? Well, I'm going to give you the thing that has worked for me and that works for um, my clients. So when you're making a decision, we talked about it last week, you're working with the energy of the third chakra. The worst thing you can do and the best thing you can do. So a lot of times when we're making a decision, what do, what do you ask yourself? You probably ask yourself this question that's not very helpful, which is, what should I do? What should I do? Now, can you imagine why that that's not a helpful question to ask? If you said, because the word should is in there, bingo, you got it. You get a gold star. The word should immediately puts you into kind of an outer validation. Should I do this? Should I do that? It's based on a preconceived idea of what's right or wrong, what's good or bad. 
And as soon as you're living in right, wrong, good, and bad, where are you? You're in the land of either or, which is the land of the ego. It's the land of the mind. It's the land of the past. Should I do this? When we're asking that question, we're not really in touch with ourselves and what we really desire. Because most of the time, if you say yes to the should, you're saying yes to a rule somewhere. Now it's not 100%. You know, there are times, and I, use, I still use that word myself, although I try to eliminate it from my vocabulary, because a should doesn't have a lot of power in it. I am going to do it, I'm not going to do it. Do I desire to do that? Those are better words, but here's the question I want you to start asking yourself. Let's say that you're thinking about a project in your business. So if you're a spiritual entrepreneur, you're a light worker, let's think about a project. Maybe you're thinking about launching a podcast. Maybe you're thinking about writing a book or offering a new program or whatever it might be. There's something that you're considering doing. And so if you say, should I do a podcast? Now you're going to start thinking about, well, that's what everybody else is doing. And maybe that would be good for me, but it's not connected to your power. So I want you to ask this question. When you're thinking about that project, where's the energy? Where's the energy? Now you're probably saying like, what does that mean? And I'm going to tell you what that means. Whenever I'm looking at what to do next or what the next course of action might be, or if I'm running into trouble and difficulty and like there seems to be a lot of obstacles, I stop and I ask myself, all right, Francis, where is the energy? Where's the energy? And there's two parts or two aspects to that question. One is what am I seeing in the outside world being mirrored to me? And two is where is my energy? So let's start with the first one. Let's say that I am wanting to um, start a book or maybe I'm wanting to take a vacation or something like that. Let's use a vacation because this is a little bit better example. So you're wanting to take a vacation. You're wanting to go to the Bahamas or something like that. And you're like, okay, I'm going to the Bahamas. That's where I want to go. Or should I go to the Bahamas or should I go to Hawaii? I don't know. Indecisive, right? Trying to decide. So then you take an action, say, okay, well, I should go to the Bahamas because it's a lot closer than Hawaii if you live on the East Coast or whatever. And so you start putting energy there. But then you find out that um, in order to go, you'd have to have three connecting flights and it's like three times more expensive than you thought. And the place that you really wanted to stay is completely booked for the next three months. And this would be an example of the energy is not really there for you. Now, there are some people in the success world that say, push through and make it happen. If you want to go, you should go and you should make it happen. And you can do that. But I find for myself, I listen for and I feel for what's the divine guidance that's coming through. So if I look and I'm like, hmm, it's not a lot of energy around this Bahama thing. Let me go see what's going on in Hawaii. Then you go to look for Hawaii and you're like, oh my God, there's an even better experience here, an even better hotel. You get to go swim with the dolphins. That's like all these things. And you're like, oh, that's where the energy is. The energy is there. The universe is supporting me and moving that direction. Now that's one way of doing it. The other way, which I think is even more important is where is my energy? Where is my energy? So again, if we use this example of vacation, do I really love the Bahamas? Am I feeling really called to go to the Bahamas? Where is my energy? Where is my enthusiasm? Or where is my energy on a physical level? So, you know, you might be thinking like, well, you know, I should go to Hawaii because um, all my friends have gone there and they've told me it's beautiful. And but when you think about like taking that long flight and what you're like, mm, is my energy really there? Am I really up for the energy of doing that? Can I honestly say my energy's up for that? Or if you look at from the level of enthusiasm, are you thinking about, well, I should go to the Bahamas because that's the easy thing to do. I don't have to be on a plane so long, but your heart is like, oh my God, I've been wanting to, I've been wanting to go to Hawaii forever. Then that's where you have to follow your energy and go with your enthusiasm. So you can go with your physical energy, like how am I feeling? Am I really up for this? If I'm honest with myself, is this kind of where I am right now? or you can go with your enthusiasm. What's really lighting me up? Where do I really wanna go? And oftentimes when you go with your enthusiasm, your physical energy starts to rise up to meet you. I've noticed this, right? That when you're like, oh, that sounds amazing. 
suddenly you feel better, you have a little bit more energy. So how can you apply this in your own life? When you're looking at making decisions, if you're finding yourself like indecisive, you're not sure what the next step is, maybe you're feeling like you're, you know, in your business, you're coming to a, an end of a chapter, or maybe you're having, you know, something going on in your personal life, like maybe your kids are all going away to college and you're having empty nest syndrome, whatever it might be. And you're thinking about like, what's next? The tempting thing is going to be to do what you've always done. The tempting thing is going to be to go back and think about what you've done before. And that's okay. It's not a wrong thing to do, but usually it won't re yield you the results that you're really looking for. Give yourself the gift and the grace of asking yourself this question. Where's the energy? Now you might not get an answer right away. This is why I recommend that you journal and you observe. You might meditate. You might chat with your friends and you know people that you really really trust or if you have somebody like me that you work with that's a, a mentor or a guide for you or a coach that you could ask and be like you know i feel like something's coming but i don't know what it is so many of my clients come to me and that's exactly what they say like i know there's a change that's here but i just don't know what it is because they can't see it because they've not had it before i can see it because it's in your energy field but if you can't see it it's like like, mm, what is that? You know, and it can feel a little bit unsettling. That's why it's comforting to go back to what you know. And again, nothing wrong with that. But if you want to move forward, take a moment. And even right now, you can put your hand on your heart and be like, where's the energy? Where is the energy today? Sometimes I ask myself this question on a daily basis. I'll write down my long to-do list. And then I wake up the next day and I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that to-do list. Say that's because that's not where the energy is. There's some days where a boom, boom, I go through that to-do list in like an hour. And then there are other days where I might not even do one thing on it. And I used to get really frustrated with myself. And now what I recognize is that I'm honoring the energy. And I'm like, oh, what needs to happen today is I need to do more self-care. Or the energy is really in going out and doing something fun or taking a nap or doing a little bit of research or doing something creative or whatever it might be. It, it's not an easy thing to do to honor this because everything in our culture is gonna tell you, you should be doing that to-do list. You should be making progress. You should be here by now or, or whatever it might be. And I'm saying to you, maybe, maybe not. Where's the energy? Because if you start trying to crank out stuff and your energy's not there, you're gonna end up frustrated. And that is the road to burnout. And it's not even gonna, you're not even gonna like what you did. Usually by the end of it, you're like, yeah, it's okay. But it won't be the experience that you'd hoped it would be. So give yourself this grace, my friends. Give yourself this grace. Give yourself the grace of asking, where's my energy? That's checking in with yourself. And then where's the energy kind of in the, where's what's being reflected back to you? What's being reflected back to you? Is this door opening? Is this door opening? You know, I've experienced recently where I was really wanting to do this one particular uh, healing modality. I wanted to go to somebody that did this particular healing modality. And I tried and I tried and I tried and like they weren't available. And then the time that I had, it ended up getting changed. And like, it just was like thwarted, thwarted, thwarted. And then I was like, you know, I don't think the energy's here. I don't think I'm being supported and moving in this direction. And that's when I say, because I talk to Mother Mary, I say, all right, Mother Mary, what else did you have in mind? What else did you have in mind? And then boom, something will come and people will say to me, hey, have you looked at this modality or have you thought about this? Or it's just happened to me recently, like something that was right in front of me. And I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. I want to do this other thing that's really complicated. It's like, nope, you're going to do the simple thing. And then the simple thing manifested and I'm having amazing results with the simple thing, which I'll tell you more about that in a future podcast. But that's an example of following the energy, follow the energy. Where is that energy for you? Is it your enthusiasm? Is it your physical energy? Is it your joy? Whatever it is for you, you want to ask yourself that question. Where's the energy today? Where is the energy? Where am I being led? Where am I being guided? Let go of the should. You can always pick that up later if you want to, but just recognize that shoulds don't usually end in a happy ending of the story. You'll feel like you did what you should have done, but your heart won't necessarily feel fulfilled. And that's why I'm here. I'm here to help you have a sense of fulfillment, a sense where your heart feels full 
at the end of your day, at the end of the week, at the end of the year, at the end of your life, I want you to feel like, ah, yeah, I did. I followed the energy and I did what made me happy. So that's what I wanted to share with you, my friend. I would love to hear your thoughts about this. Do you already do this? Do you already follow the energy? How do you do with making decisions? Um, is there something that you do? I'd love to hear about it. Please feel free to leave me a comment. I'd love to know what's working for you. Uh, and if you find this helpful, that would really be a great thing to hear too. I'd love to know if this is helpful and how you're gonna implement it. If you're somebody that's looking to be mentored, to learn how to follow your energy, to learn what's next, to see what your own energy is wanting you to know, why not set up a miracle meeting with me? I'd love to talk to you about whether miracle mentoring is the right thing for you. That would be wonderful. In the meantime, remember that the key to magnifying your miracles is to know that your miracle is already here. Thank you so much, my friend. God bless you. Bye-bye.